to my channel Made by Cathcraft. Thank you so much for joining me today. Whether you're an existing subscriber or new to my channel, I'm so glad to have you here. I love to talk about sewing, crafting, a bit of knitting too. I really like sharing fabrics and patterns. And today's vlog is all about what I've been making in February. And I'm a little bit late filming this, um, but my children have now gone back to school, which is a little bit sad, but they're really happy to be back. Um, so I've got a bit more time to be able to film vlogs, which is great. And so yes, I'm talking all about what I've been making in February. Um, I've got a few speedy projects I've sewn and a few couple of more involved makes um, and a couple of knitting projects to share with you too. So I'm really looking forward to sharing those. But before I get started on talking about what I've been making, I thought I'd share with you what I'm wearing today. So it's quite a gloomy, rainy day here in the south of England today. Um, and I'm sort of wanted to say snuggly indoors because it's still quite cold. Spring hasn't yet quite sprung here. Um, so I thought I'd wear something fairly snuggly and comfy and it's the Molly dress by Sew Over It and I'll put a picture up of me wearing it. Um, you can make a top or a dress version of the Molly um, and it comes as part of the ebook by Sew Over It. Um, it's a, um, a downloadable book you can buy um, and I've made a few variations of the Molly and um, it looks great with stripes because it's got a um, the kind of um, quite long main bodice section down to here so you can kind of have one stripe going that way and one stripe going that way which looks quite nice but the version I've made today is the dress um, in this lovely um, French terry um, that I got from Lily and Mimi fabric shop a long time ago but it's really nice quality and I've worn it a lot and it's washed really well um, and it's just a really comfy dress but I think it looks quite pretty too so that's the Molly dress by Sew Over It um, I think I make the smaller size of it um, I've made it a few times as I said that's what I'm wearing today. Oh, and I forgot to mention the name of the ebook that the Molly dress and top pattern comes from. It's the Sew Over It London City Break ebook. They have a few ebooks and they all have some really lovely patterns in. That the e City Break ebook is the only one I have at the moment, but I'm really tempted by a couple of other ones. Now, let me move on to what I've been making this month. So this month, I've actually been sewing for a few different members of my family, as well as myself. And the first um, items I wanted to share with you was three dresses I made, all using the same pattern. And I made the dresses for two different members of my family. And um, the pattern I use is this one here. It's one of my favourite children's patterns. It's the pansy dress by Poppy and Jazz, which is the children's um, pattern brand of Sew Over It. And it's just a great little basic jersey dress um, with a crew neckline, long sleeves, or you can make them short, a little gathered skirt, and to be made in jersey fabric. And it's a really quick sew, and um, for the smaller size, it's a great scrap buster too, because it doesn't take too much fabric. And I made two dresses for my daughter. She's just turned five, and um, she's been at home a lot more than usual recently with the lockdown, so she's needed some more clothes, as she's growing out of some of her old ones. So we had a look together online and found a couple of really funky fabrics to make her a couple of pansy dresses. And you'll see these fabrics if you watch my February Makes vlog where I talk about what I was planning to do in February. And so the first one is this one here, um, which I made using this really lovely turquoise unicorn print fabric. It's got quite a large scale unicorn print on with these really pretty unicorns with purple and pink. And my daughter's really into unicorns at the moment, so she loved this fabric. And I made um, the long sleeve version of the pansy dress and I added a little ruffle on the bottom here. Um, so I think it turned out really nicely. The only thing I found with this version is because the print is quite a large scale print, I had to cut it out very carefully to make sure I didn't end up with too many chopped unicorns. So I kind of had to cut it to make sure I had unicorns, um, whole unicorns on each layer of the dress, um, which actually used up more fabric than if I'd have been able to kind of, um, pa sort of pattern plan a bit more carefully and move the piece a little bit further together. So um, I used um, nearly 1.5 meters of fabric for this dress, whereas I think the pattern would say you only need about 1.1 meters. So but that was purely because of the large scale print, usually I can squeeze it into a smaller amount of fabric. And I made the size um, age three to four for my daughter. She's five, but this dress comes up quite roomy. So what I did, I made the size three to four, and then I just lengthened the bodice slightly and lengthened the skirt slightly, um, just to make sure it was long enough for her. And she's got a bit of room to grow. I'll put a picture up of her wearing it so you can see it. And what I'm planning to do is, and um, when it gets towards summer, I'll probably chop the sleeves off to make them short sleeved, just so she gets more wear out of it. But she's really pleased with it, and it's a lovely, um, snuggly cotton jersey. It came from Eliza Mac Fabrics. It was my first time using them, and we found this on there, and she had to have it. Um, and yeah, it's a really nice, soft, snuggly jersey. It was nice to work with, and um, she's already worn it a fair few times, so that counts as a win for me. And then I made her one other version too. Um, again, um, very similar. I made the um, pansy dress, same, same size, um, with a buffle again. Oh, this is hard, I picked up a bit hard from the camera, there we are. And this one, I made it with this catacorn print on, little cats with unicorn horns. Again, really cute. Um, 
and um, yeah it's um, another one she's really pleased with I made the same um, ruffle at the bottom um, again the size three to four this one um, I think I pretty much managed to fit her into a metre of fabric because I didn't have to worry too much about pattern matching or um, how the catacorn sat so um, yeah that's that one um, I'll put a picture up again of her wearing it so you can see and she's really pleased with both of them um, and hopefully she'll get a lot of wear out of them so that was the two um, pansy dress I made uh, for my daughter. But I also made one more and I made that for my niece. Um, she turned two in February. And so I just made it as a little extra birthday present as, as, long, as well as a couple of toys we got her. So I have already gifted that to her, um, but I'll put a picture up of um, so you can see it. So it's a little stripy one. And I actually made it with scraps left over from a Freya top I made for myself because my niece is quite diddy still. She's um, two and she's quite a petite two. So I think I made the 12 to 18 months version actually for her. Um, and I just about managed to squeeze it into that, that leftover stripy fabric. So um, I'll put a picture up as well of me wearing my top as well. So you can see um, how my niece and I could twin when she's wearing her pansy dress and I'm wearing my Freya top. Um, but yeah, it was just a nice, cute little make. And um, my niece has got kind of um, dark hair and sort of fair skin, so quite similar to my tone. Um, so she kind of suits similar colours to me. So um, it's quite nice to be able to use some of the scraps and make her some cute little dresses. But they were my three dresses I made using the pansy dress by Poppy and Jazz. Just really quick, enjoyable sews and nice to do a bit of scrap busting too. I've also been exploring some new um, children's patterns this month and one of them was this um, t-shirt pattern here and it's a free pattern. It's the Kids Anything But Basic Tea by DIBY Club. And I was asking on Instagram um, for a pattern that I could use for a t-shirt for a little boy because I wanted to make a t-shirt for my son and a few people recommended that and I thought, well, it's a free pattern, let's give it a go. And it worked out really well, actually. I made my son a t-shirt using that pattern in this really funky um, Where's Wally fabric. Um, so yeah, it's from one of the Where's Wally books. My son's got all the books, so he recognised the print straight away. And it's just been lovely to be able to make something for him because it's really hard to find prints he likes. A lot of things he's more interested in are brands, like um, computer game brands, and he don't often get nice cotton jerseys with those sort of pa prints on. So yeah, he was really pleased with this. Um, I made the size, he's seven, I made the size seven. There's a, um, a regular fit and a slim fit, and I made the regular fit and that came out really well. Um, so yeah, it's just a really basic t-shirt. Um, and the great thing about the pattern as well is that you can um, just print off the size you want. The pattern's layered. So if you have Adobe, you just I think you can download Adobe for free, but then you can look in there and just print off that size. So it doesn't waste loads of paper printing off a whole range of kid sizes from size age, I think it's age, maybe age, I think it's, well, it says 12 kid sizes included. So it was really nice to be able to print off just the size I wanted. And I put up a picture of my son wearing it. He's really pleased with it. Um, and this jersey came from Minerva and they've got a few different Where's Wally prints um, on their website and I'll include a link down below in case you have a family member that might quite like um, a Where's Wally print. I um, posted a picture of my son wearing this on Instagram and a couple of people actually posted saying they were making a, a t-shirt for their um, grown up children using these prints because I think you're never too old for Where's Wally really, are you? So um, yeah, it was just nice fun make and really nice to be able to make something for my son. So that's the Anything But Basic Tea by DABY Club. And then I actually used that pattern one more time because um, with the catacorn jersey I made my daughter's pansy dress in, I bought 1.5 metres to be on the safe side but I only needed to use one metre so I had some left over. So I thought I'd use it to make a little pyjama set for her. So I made a set for her using the um, Anything But Basic t-shirt um, pattern for the top in this um, pink jersey I had left over from a make of mine from a long time ago. Um, with a little, and I had a little pocket on, because you can add a pocket on the um, anything but basic t-shirts, so there's a little pattern piece for that with a little catacorn on. So I made a little pyjama top, and then a pair of pyjama bottoms, um, using the catacorn jersey too. So a little nighttime set for her for summer. Yeah, that's the little pyjama shorts and the pyjama top. They're quite cute, and it was nice to use the free pattern again, and also to use up some more scraps. The pyjama shorts I made using another um, free pattern I discovered when I was looking online to find something suitable. So the pattern I use for these little pyjama shorts is the Walk the Plank Pyjama Bottoms by Patterns for Pirates. And Patterns for Pirates is a pattern brand I've heard of before but I hadn't used before so it was nice to give them a try. And they do a free pyjama bottom pattern both for kids and for adults um, in a whole range of sizes. You, the pattern comes with a um, full length pyjama bottom option, a knee length and a little shorty option which is what I use for this um, pair. And the pattern is designed to be made in woven fabric but I thought um, I'd give it a try in jersey fabric and it worked just fine. Um, yeah, it just came together really nicely and it comes together really quickly. Um, it's a bit different to how I'm used to sewing pyjamas because instead of having two front pieces and two back pieces, each leg's cut um, as one full piece so there's no side seam. 
which was fine. I had enough fabric, thankfully, to do it like that. I guess if you had um, just smaller scraps of fabric, you might need to kind of um, make it, split it into two pieces and add a seam allowance to be able to squeeze onto smaller pieces of fabric, but it was fine. It came together nice and quickly. And then I added a little label on the back, just using some um, really soft ribbon I had. Um, I think it must have come, might have come with another order, just an extra little um, thank you for ordering. And I just popped that on the back with little pink stitching because my daughter was finding it quite hard to know which way to put them around. So my daughter wasn't very keen on having a photograph wearing these pyjamas but I'll pop up a flat lay so you can see how they look together with the top and bottom. But yeah they're a really nice um, quick easy sew. I made a size 5 for her age 5 and it came up pretty true to size and I guess the nice thing about pyjama bottoms is because they're elasticated around the waist as long as you get the elastic sizing right um, the rest of the measurements aren't too critical as long as it fits around the waist. Um, so yeah that's them. The pattern for pirates walk the plank PJs. Maybe I'll give the um, adult version a go to, another free pattern, which is great. Um, so yeah, it was really nice to be able to use the rest of that catacorn jersey and turn it into a little pyjama set as well as the dress I made for my daughter and also to try a new free pattern. But that's um, all of the makes I've been making for my children this month and now I'll move on to what I've been making for me. So my first make for me is quite a cosy wintry one. While the weather's still cold here, I thought I'd use the opportunity to make another version of one of my favourite sweatshirt patterns, which is the Jarrah sweatshirt by Megan Nielsen. I love this um, sweatshirt. I've made um, quite a few of the variations and um, it has yeah, so many different options. Um, as you can see, it's kind of an oversized fit overall, but it has lots of different options like a, a funnel neck, a um, lovely tie at the bottom, a dip hem, um, a crew neck, um, cuffs or no cuffs, kind of like a split on the sleeve. And I thought I'd take this opportunity to try a couple of new, um, of new variations I haven't used before. So I made a sweater using the funnel neck here, which I hadn't used before, and then this um, dipped hem, which I've been wanting to try for a while. It's two level, a little bit shorter at the front and a little bit longer at the back. And I, yeah, I really wanted to give those two a go and I thought that'd make a really nice cosy winter sweater. So I made that in this lovely quilted sweatshirt fabric, which I got from Higgs and Higgs. Um, it's got this lovely diamond shaped quilting on it and it's really snuggly but really soft too so it's not super thick. Um, so yeah I made this um, sweatshirt here in this lovely navy colour. I think it might be called Indigo on the website. I'll include a link below to it if it's still available. But it's, it's um, quite high cotton content and um, yeah it was really nice to sew with. It was a bit different to um, what I'm used to for um, sort of sweatshirt fabric because it's quilted. It's almost had when you cut into it it had almost like a filling in the middle. So I made sure to overlock all the edges to make sure none of that kind of filling that kind of came in the two, between the two layers of quilting um, would kind of come out or anything. So yeah, it's all overlocked up quite neatly. Um, but yeah, this is a jumper. Um, I made it in the smallest size as usual, which is a size zero, because it is an oversized look jumper. And I lengthened it by about an inch and a half because I didn't want it to come up too short at the front because I know the, the hem um, comes up higher at the front and then lower at the back and I didn't want it to come up too short there. Um, but I'll put a picture up of me wearing it. Um, yeah, I'm just really pleased with it. It's so snuggly and cosy. So yeah, I did the dipped hem and it came out really nicely with the twin needle. I think the twin needle was good to kind of um, make sure it didn't stretch out too much or anything. Um, and um, yeah, it's just a really quick sew actually, and even quicker with the stand-up cross or final neck because you don't have to worry about getting the neckband to lie flat. So yeah, I'm really pleased with it. Um, the only version now I haven't made on the <laughs> Megan Nielsen Yara pattern is this, um, this sleeve here with a split bottom. And I'm just not sure if I'll make that version, although I think it looks really nice. I'm not sure it'll be practical for me because I think it will drop down and I can just see myself... Um, yeah, sort of dipping it in things I'm cooking on the hob and that sort of thing. So I'm not sure it's practical for me to make that sleeve version, even though I like it. But yeah, this one's really nice. I've worn it out a few times already. It's been so cosy, say on a walk in the woods and things with a nice snuggly neckband. And I really love this fabric with the quilted detail. I think it's really pretty and they have it in a whole range of colours. So I'm really tempted to go back for more, but um, maybe not this year because I'm hoping spring will come soon and I'm hoping um, I'll be able to pop this one away soon and then get it out next winter again to keep me snuggly then. But yeah, that's the Megan Nielsen Jarrah sweatshirt. If you haven't made it before, I really recommend it if you like a slightly oversized fit sweatshirt. It's really comfy, perfect for going out, but also for loungewear too. Um, that's my first make for me. So my next make is probably my most involved sewing make that I made this month. And I made a dress version of this pattern here, the Bakerloo blouse and dress pattern by Nina Lee London. And um, it's a lovely pattern, it was released late last year and I think it's really on trend because it's got the statement collar with a lovely ruffle detail around the edge and it's got these balloon sleeves with a lovely little cuff detail and then you can make kind of a fairly loose fitting blouse version or a dress with a gathered skirt and pockets. Um, 
so yeah, when I saw this pattern come out at first, I really wasn't sure about it. Uh, but then I made, did a collaboration with Liz, the baker that sews, and we both um, decided to make this pattern and see um, come up with different versions. And so I made a blouse version, and I'll put a link up to um, my um, vlog talking all about the blouse version. And I was actually really converted, I really enjoyed sewing it, and I really have enjoyed wearing it too, it's such a pretty um, pattern I think. So I thought after I made the blouse version I really wanted to make a dress version too and try that out, but I wanted to make quite a different um, version to what I've done for the blouse. So I made a dress version using um, baby cord, so like a really lightweight corduroy, and here it is. Um, so yeah, I made it using this royal blue corduroy which came from Minerva, um, and I'll put a link down below to it. It's a baby cord, so it's very, very fine. So I thought that would work well for the dress and wouldn't be too bulky. Um, and I had a lot of fun with this one, really. Um, I made it um, with a little, add a little frill around the edge in a um, brodure anglais kind of lace trim instead of using the corduroy, because I wanted to add a little bit of pop of kind of um, the white against the blue. I thought that would look quite pretty. Um, yeah, so I really enjoyed sewing it, but it was, it was quite fiddly. Um, it made extra fiddly by the fact that this um, lace trim was slightly shallower than the actual um, ruffle pattern pieces so I had to kind of be quite careful as to how I sewed it around the edge to make sure enough it would show I didn't want it getting lost um, in the seam really but I'm really pleased with how that turned out and then I used um, some leftover fabric I had for my blouse to make the bias binding for around the collar because I thought that would go quite nicely with the navy blue you can't really see it um, too much though I've used a button for my stash at the back because it's got a lovely little button loop detail at the back um, and yeah, that's my dress. Um, I'll put up a picture of me wearing it and then I'll talk through a few adjustments I made to um, get the pattern to work just how I wanted it to for me. So that there's me wearing it. Um, I made a size six in the bust and then I tapered out to a size eight on the waist and hips um, because that seems to my measurements better. The size six, I'm sort of 32, 26, 36. Um, the size six bust was 32. And then it took me up to size 8 waist, which is 26, and size 8 hips is 35.5, so slightly smaller than me, but I thought with a gathered skirt, that will be quite forgiving. And I added pockets in as well, so it's got the full pockets, which will be quite useful. Um, yeah, just for popping things in, out and about. And I made the pockets in um, the navy fabric I had left over again from my Bakerloo blouse that I used for the ruffle on the Bakerloo blouse, because I thought that corduroy pockets might be a little bit heavier and chunkier and might spoil the sort of flow of the skirt. So yeah, I use that lightweight fabric, it's a kind of a cotton lawn for the pockets. So yeah, I made a size 6, then tapering to the 8, but I did make a few adjustments. Um, first of all, I lengthened the bodice slightly, because it looked like it came up quite short when I held the pattern piece up to me. I often spend a bit of time in front of the mirror holding up pattern pieces and figuring out how they might fit and sit once I've made the pattern. I'm kind of agonising over how much I should add. Um, but I lengthened the bodice by one and a half inches, and I'm really glad I did, because that kind of comes down to just about my natural waist. And then also with the bodice, I added on waist ties at the side to kind of cinch it in a little bit because I didn't want it to be kind of too smock dressed like, I wanted it to be a bit more fitted. So I added in some quite narrow waist ties that I could just pull at the back. Um, I also um, changed the sleeve and similar to my blouse, if you've seen my vlog talking about the adjustments I made for my blouse, I made the sleeve narrower because I didn't want it too balloony because I thought that might end up wearing me. So it's not so much of a statement sleeve now, it's still got the lovely little gathered cuff detail, but it's not such a balloon sleeve. I adjusted the pattern pieces. And if you want to see more about how I adjusted those pattern pieces, then check out my vlog where I talk all about the um, reviewing the blouse version of the Bakerloo. And um, what else did I change? Just having a look. Oh, the only other thing I changed was I made the skirt slightly shorter. Um, I'll put up a picture again so you can see how that looks. I think I took about three inches off the skirt from the pattern piece, um, just because I preferred it that length on me. And I guess I'd lengthen the bodice slightly as well, so probably it only ended up one and a half inches shorter than where it's designed to sit. Um, and then the other, only other thing is, I, um, as with the blouse, I also um, um, lowered the armhole slightly just to give it a little bit more um, ease under here because I found um, when I made a toile that it came up a little bit tight under the arm so it gave a little bit more movement under the arm. Um, so those are the adjustments I made. Um, I've talked more in more detail about this dress and I've done a blog post on it and I'll include a link down to my blog below in case you'd like to read a bit more. But the baby cord was lovely to sew with and I think it's a really pretty colour and um, I'm really sad that I haven't got anywhere to wear it much at the moment other than the supermarket. Um, so hopefully at some point I'll be able to wear it out somewhere because um, I really love it and I love a bit of corduroy and I'm hoping that I'll be able to wear it into spring because it's not too heavy because it's quite a lightweight corduroy. But that's my um, Bakerloo dress by Neen Lee London. I'm really happy with how that one turned out. So my next make is one I didn't actually talk about in my February sewing plans because I didn't have the fabric at that stage. Um, the fabric popped up on my Instagram feed in February 
and I just snapped it up straight away because I really loved it. It came from the Fabric Godmother and it's this fabric here. It's a heart print cotton jacquard jersey fabric. Um, as I said, it's from the Fabric Godmother. It's a jersey fabric, so it's got some stretch, but it's got these really lovely little raised hearts on it. And it came in three colourways, um, a white, a grey, and then this sort of pale pink. And I'm not usually a pink person, but the pink just really appealed to me. So I bought it, and when it arrived at home, I kind of wanted to sew with it straight away. I think I just finished my Bakerloo dress as well, so I was looking for a quick kind of palette cleanser type make, and I thought um, sewing up a t-shirt in this lovely fabric would be a nice, um, easy, relaxed sew. So the pattern I use to sew this fabric up is the, oh, oh here it is. It is the Kyoto um, Tea and Sweater by Papercut Patterns. And it's a lovely um, pattern. It's quite a boxy um, sweater or t-shirt. You can see the line drawings and it's got a lovely little ruffle feature on the sleeves here, both the sweater and the t-shirt. Um, yeah, it's quite um, boxy and relaxed fit. Um, I make the smallest size and I think that sits, fits my bust. And possibly the measurements of the smallest size are slightly smaller than my hips and waist, but um, because it's so boxy and relaxed it's fine um, but I decided to make my version without the ruffle um, because I thought the ruffle with the pink might be a bit too much so that yeah that's why I sewed up um, and um, I really enjoyed sewing it <laughs> until I got to the end um, and I noticed there was this imperfection in the fabric right at the front here one of the little hearts um, it looked like kind of the threads had broken on it so it was going to start to sort of um, come apart so which is quite disappointing but um, I thought, what can I do with it? And I added on a little heart kind of motif or patch here um, using the same fabric. Um, yeah, so I just sewed over the, um, it, the little imperfection of the fabric just to hopefully keep it um, so that when it does wash and everything now, it won't um, get any worse because it's all protected by that fabric there. So yeah, I had that little heart motif on um, and I'm quite pleased with how it looks actually, I guess. Although it's a shame it had an imperfection, I guess I'm quite lucky that it was in a place that was quite suitable for a little patch. It wouldn't have been ideal if it was right down the bottom or on the back or somewhere. Um, but yeah, I made it into just this boxy, relaxed t-shirt. I love the dropped shoulders of the um, paper cut tee. And I thought I'd get a lot of wear out of it when it came to spring and summer with um, a jeans or a pair of shorts. But I'll put a picture of me wearing it, as you can see. As I said, I'm not usually a pink person, but I really love this fabric and I thought the pink was a really nice shade. I'll put a link down to the Fabric Godmother web website down below, but I think all of the colourways of this have sold out now. It kind of got snapped up really quickly because it's such a lovely, unusual fabric. And what I also like about it is it's quite a drapey, um, it's, it's quite, although it's a cotton knit fabric, it's quite drapey compared to your average cotton jersey. So it works really well, I think, for the Kyoto t-shirt because it kind of drapes over your body a bit. It's not too stiff and boxy. So yeah, it has a nice amount of drape in it for a cotton sort of knit fabric. But yeah, um, although it turned into a bit more of a um, frustrating sew than it should have been, um, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. I think it's just nice to have a few fairly basic t-shirts in my wardrobe as we head towards spring. So that was the yeah, paper cuts, oops, Kyoto tea, um, just without the ruffle. So as well as saying for my um, children and my niece and me this month, I also made a couple of things for my husband. And I thought I'd share those too. And the first one um, was using this um, pattern here. It's the uh, men's Hudson pants pattern by True Bias. So I made him a pair um, of had some pants a couple of months ago and he's not usually a joggers wearer he's usually um more of a jeans type guy um, but i thought i said to him you know you might find them quite comfy on an evening <laughs> a bit of loungewear and also with him working from home he's in jeans all day so i thought, thought it might be quite nice to change in something a bit different and feel like he's finished work by the evening so i made him one pair of hudson um, pants and he was completely converted and um said he might like another pair so i made another pair and i used this um this french terry from minerva um, it's just like a navy French cherry. He didn't want anything too <laughs> out there. Um, and um, yeah, it's quite lightweight because he does get hot. He doesn't want anything too like snuggly like I might like. Um, so yeah, I just made those for him. I'll put a picture up um, so you can see how they look on. Um, and he's really pleased with those. So it's another nice, really quick sew. I love the Hudson pants pattern. It's such a great um, basic pattern and perfect for loungewear. And I also made him one knitting make and I'll show you that too. So it has been really cold um, this winter here in the UK and we've been out on a lot of walks in the woods um, with lockdown. There hasn't been many other options for things to do and it's been lovely to actually get out in the woods. And um, my husband's hat was getting really old and tatty so I said would you like me to knit you a new hat? Because um, I've knitted a couple of hats and I quite enjoy them. It's quite a quick simple knitting project. So he said he would like that and we had to look online and I'm, I found a couple of patterns to narrow it down to and he chose this pattern here. It's a free pattern that we downloaded from um, Love the Love Crafts website and it's a Caron men's basic hat and scarf set. So you can see it's quite a straightforward um, hat. It's got a turn up at the bottom and ribbing knit and then just sort of a stocking stitch as you get to the top. And you can also make a scarf, um, but he wasn't um, so fussed about having a scarf. 
and I made him, um, and here it is. Um, yeah, it was a nice, it was a nice um, knit actually, um, and I made it um, using this um, Stylecraft Aran wool, which is um, quite nice actually, and really snuggly. It's an acrylic Aran wool, um, so it shouldn't be an itchy or anything. And I added a label so you can. Um, See which side the back is because it's actually knitted rather than being knit in the round this one's knit on the flat and then you sew up the back um and it's not too obvious a seam but i thought it might be nice to know which way is the back for him so that's that it was a quite nice um straightforward knit um quite an enjoyable quick project i'll put up a picture of him wearing it so you can see how it looks on i haven't knitted much for him at all before so it was nice to be able to knit something for him and i think the color he chose this kind of um gray color is quite nice so um yeah that was um a, just a really nice quick a knitting project and great that it's a free pattern. I actually knitted two hats this month um, as well as knitting one for my husband I also knitted one for my mum. Well I actually finished my mum's one in March but I thought I'd show you in my February makes video because um, I'm planning to gift it to her for Mother's Day so I won't have it to show you um, when it comes to my March makes. But I made her a hat using this pattern here. Um, it's the braided cable beanie pattern by Below Zero Canada and it's another one I got from Love Crafts. This one I paid for but it was quite reasonably priced. And it's a really nice hat. Um, it's got two different types of cable knit running up the hat and then a turn up um, bottom here. And I first um, made this pattern for myself, um, I think just late last year. I had some leftover um, chunky wool, it's a chunky wool um, hat. I had some leftover chunky wool from a cardigan I made and so I thought I'd turn it into a hat and I put up a picture of me wearing it so you can see it. And I went out for a walk with my mum and she really liked it and said maybe I can make her one. So I thought I'd make her one for Mother's Day. Um, so I, here it is. Um, again, it's using chunky wool, and I chose a um, colour, it's called Emperor, I think. Um, it's another Stylecraft chunky yarn. Um, and it's, yeah, it's a lovely deep purple colour, which I think will suit my mum. And I added a pom-pom on top, and this pom-pom came from a um, seller on Etsy. I bought a couple of their pom-poms for myself too, and they're really um, lovely quality, and I think really good value as well. And I'll put a link down below um, to their um, shop on Etsy in case you fancy checking them out. But they're ideal for a hat, they come with little ties, so you can... Um, tie them onto the hat really nicely. Um, but yeah, I'm really pleased with that, actually. I hope my mum will like it. Um, the pattern knits up really nicely. It's a knit in the round and it's a really nice um, relaxing knit and quite, it's got a bit of detail too, so it adds a bit of interest when you're knitting. It's not just back and forth. Um, so yeah, I'm really pleased with how it turned out. The only thing to mention is um, I found that my measurements, um, when they said at certain stages it should measure a certain amount of um, centimetres, I found mine was um, not quite the same as theirs, so I added an extra cable knit round to it, so it's slightly higher than their hat um, ends up. But my mum, um, I was fine with it like that, and my mum said she quite liked having a bit more space actually and not being too tight on the head, so I just did hers the same as mine, a little bit higher. So hopefully she'll like it. Um, yeah, it was a nice knit and I'm looking forward to giving that to her for Mother's Day. But that was the braided cable bean beanie by Below Zero Canada. It's a really, yeah, really nice cable knit hat pattern. And I've got one more knitting project to share with you too. And this is a bit more of a longer um, term knitting project that I finally finished in February. I think I started it maybe in November. I might have talked about it in my November sewing plans or something like that. And I made this cardigan here. It's the JB247 by James Seabrett, and it's not a company I was familiar with before, but I was just searching on the Lovecrafts Knitting Patterns database, looking for kind of like a basic cardigan that I'd be able to wear with lots of things. Um, so it's knit in stocking stitch, and it's quite a simple shape um, with a round neck um, and a button band at the front. So I thought I'd give it a go, and I finally finished it, and <laughs> here it is. Um, it's knit in chunky wool, so it's really cosy, but it's quite straight, simple too. And I added on these buttons I got from eBay, kind of navy buttons to go with it. And I'll, I'll put it on because it's hard to see what it looks like just holding it up. But it was a really nice knit actually. It came together really well. Um, and I didn't need to make too many adjustments to the pattern. Um, the, the arm length was really good on me actually. Um, often I find things come up a bit short, but this came up perfect on me. Um, and I only, I, I actually did make one adjustment to sort of lengthen the bodice slightly. And I put a picture up of me wearing it too so you can see. Just, um, I didn't think it was too short, but I wanted it a bit longer on me. So I think I might have added in 10 extra rows or something like that, um, just to make it that little bit longer. So I'm really pleased with that, actually. It's really cosy. Um, and yeah, I'm, I think I'll get a lot of wear out of it because it's in this basic navy colour. Um, but as I said, I'll put a picture of me wearing it. Um, what else is there to mention? Oh, one thing is, I um, in terms of the sizing, um, the, the, the sizes are the smallest size is to fit bust 28 to 30, and the next size is to fit bust 32, 34. I'm a 32, and I definitely think that I'm glad I went with a size 32 to 34. I wasn't sure if it would end up being a bit big on me because it's designed for 32 and 34, but actually it is quite fitted still, so um, I'm quite pleased with the sizing, and I think if I'd gone any smaller, it would have definitely felt a bit too snug. Um, 
the only other thing to mention is that the way the button band is attached on is a bit different to how I'm used to. I'm kind of used to it being attached on where you pick up a knit all the way along. But with this um, button band, you kind of attach it to the rib knit at the bottom and then you sort of knit it up separately. And then afterwards you sew it on so you kind of knit um, vertically up rather than horizontally across, if that makes sense. So it's a bit unusual way of attaching the button bands. And then you just pick up a knit the normal way round or the way I'm used to round the, round the top here. Um, but it, was, it wasn't um, a bad thing at all. It was just a bit different and I enjoyed trying it out. And yeah, it was a really nice pattern to knit with actually. And I think I'll probably make more of these just because they're so basic. Um, they'll go with anything really. And they're quite, yes, yeah, simple, simple knit. So that was the um, James Seabrett um, JB247. And I knitted it in this um, style craft, chunky acrylic wool. Um, in a kind of, I think it might be called Midnight or something like that, a kind of navy blue colour. But I'm really pleased with it. Um, and that's the last make I have to share with you today. I'm working on another a knitted cat, but I haven't quite finished that. So I'll hopefully be um, sharing that in my March makes vlog. And I've got a few other things underway too. So I'm looking forward to um, yeah, sharing some more makes soon. And I've got a couple of other vlogs I've got planned. So do uh, make sure you're subscribed to my channel and please do click the bell icon too so you are notified of when my future vlogs come out. Now that I've got a bit more time on my hands with the children at school, I'm hoping to be able to make a couple more vlogs. But yeah, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed seeing my makes. Um, and I'll put all the details below in case you want to have a look at any of the fabrics or patterns yourself. Um, I hope you have a great day and I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.